Okay. Authors must keep all points of interest in front of the audience and present more content when the front is fully occupied. So you should focus on doing VR 180 content. Forget about 360. Don't even bother with 360. Don't even bother with mono content. Focus on stereo VR 180. That's the primary, and I'd say this most important format to deal with right now. Um, because you can direct it. You can, uh, you, you, the, the audience can expect where the contents are going to be when it comes to them. Um, and they don't have to follow it. They don't have to turn to, to find it. They don't, the, you don't have to give them audio cues to let them know where the content is. Um, you don't have to make it a mystery novel of, of content. You need to make it pretty much obvious, make it within their visual field so that uh, when the content becomes, when the subject matter becomes available, um, they know where to look that's within their visual space. Um, it's whenever the content is fully immersive that um, it, re it uh, requires a 360 medium. Um, example being the Cirque du Soleil's presentation that immerses the audience with plenty of content around them they can revisit at future planes. Um, that is going to be um, it, it, the, the revisiting of the content is going to be your um, is going to be your friend as a content provider because the more immersive your content is, the more um, your story is going to be well told, the more detail to your story is going to be there, the more the, the consumer of the content will be entertained, um, the less you will have to keep them distracted to uh, keep them satisfied and keep them from falling asleep. Um, so the more, the more content you have in the space, the more immersion there is, the, the, the greater um, the chance you're going to use the 360 format if that's what you want to do. Um, but I would say focus on the 180 first before going for the 360. Um, don't, don't, um, don't do what uh, they did in Crow. Um, um, I'm, uh, my, my two examples, an example of apps that ruin it for audiences, the game Virtual Virtual Reality. It's a fantastic game, but there are instances in the game whenever you need to go to a certain place and if you overstep it, there's no way for you to turn and go back. You have to leap backwards or you have to get up and turn around and look and see where it is you need to go and, and, and point in that direction. That is not a very good experience. That ruined it for me. I don't will not play that game anymore for that reason. Is that, um, and the other reason is that um, I got to a point where I could not figure out where, out where else to go with the game. Um, it was interesting to a point, but then it lost its relevance because the author did not plan um, for for its audience. Um, Crow, though it has awards, fuck awards, uh, anybody will give you an award. And you can convince your audience that they're supposed to be um, they're supposed to be uh, interested in the content because they got awards, you know, because you got awards, uh, the people are going to want to see your content because other people thought your content was great. I could pay people to give me awards, you know. That's what some of those awards are, is they're just special, um, you know, I'm sure that's payola. I'm sure somebody's given some money to some big, some big name uh, panels and the panels just turn around and gave them awards because they gave them money to do it. You know, it's payola. 
I don't see that film as being all that entertaining. I mean, it was some, somewhat entertaining, but in a, a 360 format does not make any sense. Okay. So, um, Crow forces you whenever you're first watching the film to find the the actor and to follow the actors around in the three the 360 degree space you need to be in a swivel chair to fully um to fully experience what that story is um but if you're sitting in a chair and stuff is happening behind you, you're going to say, fuck it, I'm going to go to the next thing. I'm not interested in this enough to to, to toss. At, you know, people are not going to, they're going to want to experience VR for longer periods of time, so longer and longer periods of time. They're willing to hold the headsets on their face for longer than an hour, two or three hours. I I myself can go full days on with VR headsets on me. Okay. Um, the content that I that I am attracted to is the content that uh, keeps me immersed and interested. But whenever the content is not immersive, when it is um, expecting me to change to meet its um, its goals to try to keep it's trying to get me to get up and walk and and turn around and look at content that's when i say fuck you i i say screw this i am going to something else because this is just not interesting enough for me this is just not this is not pandering to me it's not pandering to to my to my uh my viewership my my viewer my my needs it's not pandering to my needs it's pandering to its own needs and its own needs is to try to justify its need for 360 content whenever there was no real immersion in the content there's there the actors are on one side of the sphere they're not on they're not surrounding the space um the story doesn't require 360 discrete uh environment it only really requires a 180 okay the only reason why they used a 360 environment is because that's what they were presenting with and they said oh well, we're going to we're going to just make it work okay that's the problem uh, you should never do that you should only pick the con the the format um after you've determined that the story can be or should be told with it um that it merits its use. Okay. Um, sorry that I use cuss words. It's the only way I can get people's attention sometimes. I don't use cuss words all the time. I only use them when I'm trying to get, when I'm putting, putting in an exclamation point and I want people to, to be, to, to, to become erect and aware of what it is that I'm saying to them, to 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 pay attention, okay. Maybe it's bad communication. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I think you need more me more than I need you, okay. Um, that's part of the thing. Is that's the way I see things. Is that um, You need to come up with a better way, a better method of communication in this medium. And you need to be open and receptive to other people's ideas. Just the way this, whenever Tun had opened, had his Blender package in open source, he had to become more receptive to general users' needs. It took him time to come to the realization, but it was the ultimate say in what was to go into that package. And because of that, that it is, is the way it is now is because 
because the people who used the package um, became important in the process of making the package work, um, making it, a, giving it adoption. So you have to, we have to focus in VR, we have to focus on, on adoption. We want the audience to adopt this new medium. And in that, we have to pander to them. We have to pander to their, their orientation, where they are in their environment, what they're doing, what you can expect they'll be doing, how they will be sitting. Um, you can't expect them to jump up and run towards your content. You, that may work for first time experiences in VR, but a, 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 eventually people are going to want to relax to VR content. They're going to want to sit in a chair and not move. And so you need VR content to move to, to when it's immersive to be, um, to be, to, to permit them to revisit the content at a later date not to try to get them to look at every detail that's in the content, but to get them to, um, to, to, to tell the story in a way that um, permits them to get it the first time around and the second time around to get more and the third time around to get more than you want them to revisit the content. You want them to be, um, to, to, see if you if you're going to tell your story all at once use 360 but but give plenty of information and put it all around them immerse them in it they'll get be distracted the first time the second time they'll come around and they'll start seeing things they didn't see before and they'll start understanding the story more and more so think of it um think of storytelling in the vr as um instead of giving them a single path to follow by uh to follow like you would with a 2d medium and a postage stamp screen um, rather than doing that think of storytelling in the vr medium as a a way as just as just immersing the the cons the, the the viewer in everything and making it all interesting, making it all uh, storytelling, giving them just enough in their visual field of their, in their, in the direction in which they will be facing, give all the content that you would give in a 2D framed format, um, make it available to them there, but then add extra stuff in the 360. So you could think of probably a good way to maybe storytell in the 360. Um, one format, one way of doing it would be, say you give your entire movie up here in front and on the sides, you've got uh, people who are involved with the making of the movie and they, they're not gonna be talking, but they might be presenting panels. And as you turn to look at them, the audio shifts to let you know that you're no longer watching the movie, but now you're watching somebody who was involved in the making of the movie. And they're sitting there talking to you as if you're right next to them and saying, I, I was involved in this and I was doing this and blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't see VR content like that. That takes some planning. That re involves um, engineering engineering of the interface but it's a different way of presenting vr content is to have is to whenever you go and experience the 360 you're also experiencing parallel stories it could be that so you see i just created a a method of communication just right now just out of my head just I just created something that isn't even there yet that nobody's using, and you heard it from me. That's the reason why I don't 
value you as much as you as I feel you should value me. Um, I do value you, but I'm just saying um, you stand to gain something from listening to me. And I know this. Uh, I know this and I believe it. And, um, you know, it's up to you to, to continue to, to um, absorb what you can from what I'm saying, okay? So, so the number two authors must keep all points of interest in front of the audience and present more content when the front is fully occupied. So you must focus on occupying, first and foremost, everything that's in front of the viewer before you even start to introduce anything that's outside of that, that view. It, and um, I came up with an idea for the kind of content that would that could be used in VR that isn't being used, um, Bollywood productions. Uh, those would be fully immersive um, experiences if the entire musical was centered around the camera of the, the, the user, that they would become part of, um, they would become heirs to the throne in a Bollywood production they would see all of the music, all the dancers around them, all the people singing about them. They could go through the audience. They could come to the front. Um, the musical is going to come back through VR. Stage productions are going to come back through VR. Um, vaudevillian production will come back through VR. Things that used to exist on stage, productions that used to exist on stage will be, will work better with VR. Um, Hollywood production will not. It will not survive in VR. And uh, so, second rule of uh, VR, protect the audience from traumatic. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip over that. Um Three, make content that is relevant to VR. Avoid representing postage stamp 2D content in immersive 3D realm unless there is some incentive for the audience to do so. There is no longer a frame to put content in. Shun the old language of presentation. Learn a new method of communication. And then I start this whole thing out with, and this is the truth. This is what's going to happen with this content. Hollywood will never respect VR. Don't expect Hollywood to accept it. Reasons cinematographers will shun VR. Number one, telephoto lenses and stereo produce cardboard cutout perception. I know this because I've dealt with, uh, I, I created 10,000 stereogram photos in my 30s using digital cameras, and I know what a telephoto lens does to stereo content. And it is the reason why a lot of cinematographers will, will, sh will shudder when they have to, to tell a story with, um, with VR because they can't use, or, or with 3D, because they can't use telephoto lenses anymore. Um, so they can't do, they can't do a, a, a establishing shot. They can't, come from far off and zoom up on somebody. They can't have, there's certain sorts of, of things that they use to, um, there's certain sort of shots that um, lend themselves to telephoto that they will not be able to use in their tool chest because a telephoto lens just creates very, a, a very distracting um, effect in stereo that, it, it just doesn't offer the brain enough, um, enough. The brain needs to be able to wrap around it, wrap itself around the content. Content needs perspective. And whenever you're focusing on something far off, the flatter it's going to be. Just as mountains in the distance are flat, that's because your brain doesn't have enough 
doesn't have enough perspective on the mountain to really see that it's a 3D object. The only way you can do that is if you distance the eyes apart further. So if you put 100 feet between one eye and another and look at the mountain, the mount, mountain will appear 3D. In order to see things in 3D from far off and zoom up on them, the only way to do that is to distance the, the eyes apart as you're zooming up on something, as you're telephoting into something. So you're, you can use telephoto in the CG sense, but in the real world sense, you're going to have two guys on dollies with each with each lens, and they'll be moving away from your camera crew while looking at the content that they're zooming up on. That's the only way they're going to get a 3D effect out of a telephoto shot. And uh, real uh, cinematographers that have dealt with this know that this is the only way to do that, and they can't use telephoto lenses. They can't use lens packs anymore. All they can use is macro and fisheye lens uh, for VR. And that just that just sours them to the whole experience of even dealing with VR content. Uh, nowhere to hide the camera crew. Where are you going to hide your camera crew in a 360 disc, uh, experience? You're not. Uh, in a 180 experience, uh, you probably will be able to, but you'll see a hand or foot laying off on the side, and you'll have to um, you'll have to shade off that stuff in order to hide it. Um, which will deal with will uh, produce less coverage. Um, you won't see a uh, you won't have a 180. You'll have a 130 degree experience. 2D image manipulation is easy to detect in 3D. The CG is much harder to synthesize into shots. When using CG, 3D artists cannot use bump maps as they appear painted on a surface. I know this for for a fact. Um, so bump maps, uh, if you've dealt with 3D graphics and you've used bump maps, you can't use bump maps anymore. Um, you have to use height maps and you have to, um, uh, so the height maps are going to produce shadows that are going, it, the, the objects are going to be self-occluding. Their, their um, bump maps are going to, the height maps are going to cast shadows on the object. Um, they can't rely on just making one side of the bump darker anymore. They have to actually be casting shadows to appear to be, to have depth. Um, so you can't use bump maps anymore. You have to use height maps. CG that satisfy 2D perception can appear flat and lifeless in 3D. Therefore, shaders have to be customized for a 3D perception. Um, Limited transitions possible, fades and cuts only. Uh, wipes become 3D effects. So you would think of a wipe as being like um, drawing curtains rather than uh, doing a 2D wipe where you, you bring in curtains. You would actually use real curtains to bring in, to, to wipe uh, and to, to do a transition. Um, you would, I don't like fades in, in VR. I think it's stupid. Um, I think cuts, maybe dissolves, um, but 3D effects coming up with ways of transitioning by using a 3D object that includes the space and goes from one shot to another leading into the next shot. That uh, is one way of doing a, a wipe. Um, so, you know, having somebody's hand pass in front of you and have one shot on the other end of the hand while the other shot is, is being wiped away by the hand. So use a hand, use anything you can possibly do. Um, be very creative with doing transitions. Don't fall back on 2D wipes because they don't make any sense in a 3D uh, medium. You can't do a 2D wipe. If you do a 2D wipe, it'll be very distracting to the viewer. So, um, so um, close-ups in the world unto themselves. Filmmakers have to be very creative when wanting to use a close-up on anything because it infringes on the audience's space. If I want you to look at something, 
I'm going to bring it up here. And I just, I just, you know, I just um, disrespected the audience. I just said, uh, hey, look at my, look at this. And um, you're just like trying to look at that. And um, it's taking you out of the story. It's taking you, it's uh, distracting you from the story and it's making you um, adapt. You don't want that. And you, you won't be able to do it. You won't be able to focus. The only way you'll be able to probably do that is to maybe have the user fly up over and down onto the content. So maybe you were flying into the content and so it's coming to you slowly. It, it's, and as they're, they're going to be focusing on it, they get to see it like that. That's the only way you're going to be able to bring in content to focus them on to something small is by bringing it to them. You can't just throw it up in their face. So that's um, close-ups are a world unto themselves. And so you, you have to think about how you're going to do a close-up shot. Um, so it just takes more planning. You can't, you can't, present content the way you did in the 2D art form, um, you can't use that anymore. You have to think of different ways of presenting the content, um, of bringing it to the people. Uh, multiple takes present more problems in spatial consistency. Therefore, everything must be shot on the same day, same time, in the same order, with the same lighting, etc. Or the sets must be clean. Audiences will be aware, distracted by changes in the space. So more takes you do, somebody throws down a soda can, um, you have to then, you have a take, and then you come back to the editing, and then you realize there's soda cans and junk in the space that has moved between takes. It will be distracting to the, to the viewer. Um, you can't use that content. Um, you must keep the spaces either clean or the content can't move and you have to be, everybody has to be very careful about what they do with that content. If you're dealing with uh, a great immersion of, if you're, if you, it, that's the reason why it's, why musicals are gonna come back is because in a musical, it's all one shot. You don't do multiple takes of a musical. Um, it's a, it's gonna be one full shot of this one full shot of that and um you're not going to have multiple takes on on the shot you're not going to be able to do it um so just think of you're just going to have to do more planning ahead whenever you do your movie you can't do multiple takes you can't get things correct you'll never be able to do that ever again um you can't manipulate the medium because it's 3D. You can't use 2D manipulation on it. People will be able to know when the content has been removed. So if there was a soda can in one shot and, and, it, and it moved in another shot um, and you go into the editing process and you want to use one over the other and, uh, or, um, and you notice that soda can is going to be distracted to the audience, you go in and you erase it in 2D, the audience is going to see that there's a hole, a 3D hole. They're going to see um, a, a dark space that has 3D dimension to it, um, where that can was. You know, you're going to have a much harder time getting rid of content in 3D. Um, I've taken, I've taken images of shadows that had 3D dimension to them. All you have to do is just take. Uh, something and turn it a little bit whenever you take to each picture and you can create a, a three-dimensional shadow. It is possible. And the brain will, will recognize it as being a 3D, a 3D object, even though it, it, it's just two shadows that, have, that uh, come together. The brain is incredibly good at recognizing patterns in 3D content. So don't expect that you're ever going to be able to take and and do any kind of 2D manipulation to the content. You're just going to have to um, use less takes and um, and uh, 
just be very clean about how you do shots. You're just going to have to get everybody on your on the same level to realize that they can't be laying laying soda cans in the shot. They can't. They everything has got to remain in position um, if they're going to do multiple takes. Um, I, I'm going to have to go to work here. So, um, due to amateur actors challenge the perfection of the cut, fewer takes can be taken. Directors will feel like Ed Wood when making movies as they will not be able to edit a movie to perfection. I was just saying that. So you'll be like Ed Wood. You'll be just like saying, okay, um, we have enough of this. We'll go to the next shot. Uh, we have enough of this. We'll go to the next shot. We won't be doing multiple takes. Um, we will have lots of imperfection. Um, the only thing, uh, the better way to deal with it is, as I say, immerse them in the content and give them lots of give them lots of, of uh, ways of taking in the story rather than focusing on so much on trying to perfect things within a, in a postage stamp the way it used to be. Focus on trying to give them enough information in every shot to, to perceive that part of the story. Um, and if not that, then to also bring in actors to talk about their involvement in the shot because that can be interesting. Uh, even though the story is not very interesting, it can be really interesting, the, the, um, the uh, metaphysical aspect of the story telling um, can be very interesting just as DVDs with extra director commentary is makes old movies more interesting and revisitable um, that can be a reason why people will want to um, look at the content again so um, think of doing that with your VR content um, one must be concerned with spacing the lenses the perception of dimension uh, uh, can affect the perception of dimension. However, this could offer possible forms of content, seeing things from ants, animals, child's perspective, from God's bill, Godzilla's perspective, from the Earth's perspective. You have a great wealth of of ways of presenting dimension with uh, with VR three eighty uh, or I mean one hundred eighty VR stereo content. With stereo, you have um, the capacity to be able to take the audience to places that they never were able to be in the um, in the old 2D format. Um, actors 